welcome back everybody chew here bringing you a another review on the mandalorian and i gotta say this episode uh, was a bit of a mixed bag giving you my overall thoughts here and though i wanted to enjoy it for the cameos it just felt kind of out of place and it took me out uh some of the other stuff though we had a lot of in my opinion some nostalgia we even had some callbacks to certain things so as far as the progression of the story there wasn't much until the very end and that i want to say was probably wrapped up in about 10 15 minutes max so i don't know this episode overall just wasn't hitting the marks for me and the finale is in two weeks so i don't want it to be where we're going to be forced to have so much being crammed in into these next two episodes which worries me uh, this has not been a very strong season overall for a lot of people but that's just my opinion but anyway guys before i get into it please make sure to also like comment and subscribe as it would be appreciated and therefore we can continue to grow this community but let's get into it so this episode starts off with seeing the former i guess you could say subordinates or sub former group of the mandalorians that were with uh, bo -Katan much uh, I want to say it's been a while honestly but now they're being led by the male that we saw back in season 2 uh, Axel Wolf and I gotta say I'm I'm actually liking him he's one of the few things that I would say was probably redeemable about this episode seeing him and so we see that he actually is on task to save or I guess you could say extract this person that ran away from home due to love and all that and i'm just kind of like okay that's just kind of random but just to kind of introduce us as to what they were doing and so we find out that Bo is on her way to go find her former squad and they are on this planet called plazir 15 which it it kind of looked different i don't know what to compare it to it was in a giant dome uh, but we see that they get beamed inside essentially and they get in there and they have a little to no clue as to what they're to do we see a couple of droids guiding them uh, getting them to go in uh, this like, i want to say subway system they get sucked in and they meet directly with the people in charge of this the lord and lady of this land or of this planet and we find that the people that are playing it are Jack Black and Lizzo, a duo that I had never thought I would ever expect seeing in Star Wars. And probably one of the things that, not because of who they are, but the characters that they played just kind of took me out of the episode. It felt like it was a bit unnecessary to have characters like that in Star Wars just because of they have very little implication. I would have wanted to have a better written character for both of them just because of who they are. This just kind of feels like anyone can get in there now. And it's just like, even if you're not a well-written character, you have very little to offer. This is different for Christopher Lloyd, who finally is able to be seen in The Mandalorian. A lot of people have speculated what his role is going to be. And I'm actually glad because his makes more sense because he kind of plays out to be somewhat of the villain in this episode but we don't know that initially because we see that uh these uh, both bo -Katan and din are tasked with trying to find out the root cause of why battle droids are actually that are being recommissioned or repurposed better yet start to act up we find out that uh all this investigation that they do leads into the discovery that christopher lloyd is the one behind all of this uh, i do like that throughout this episode i did say there was some nostalgia when we saw din and bo chase after this droid 
walked through the city. It gave me episode two Attack of the Clone vibes. I honestly felt like that was kind of that scene. We also saw this uh, battle droid jetting. We had never seen uh, a battle droid running. And I gotta say, if it was actually the case where they were able to run this fast, it would have destroyed the Republic. Just saying. But also seeing a callback to Khalil back from season one with the I have spoken and talking to the Ugnaughts. I thought that was a very nice uh, touch. I actually enjoyed it. The bickering between Din and Bo was interesting to see. But going back on track, we find out that the one that's behind all this is Christopher Lloyd's character, who was a separatist throughout all these years. He had survived the Republic. He had survived the Empire. He even name drops Count Dooku. But luckily, Bo is able to kind of put a stop to him. And we find out, uh, well, we have him basically being exiled to one of the moons of their planet. So in the end, it was just kind of, eh, you know, an eh moment there. But it was great to see Christopher Lloyd. Like I said, Jack Black and Lizzo didn't play a significant role in anything. They were just kind of like, okay, the ones in charge. And we also had Grogu kind of being a pet. I wasn't really exactly happy about seeing that, but... It is what it is. But most importantly, towards the very end of the episode, we have Bo challenging Axe into a fight. He accepts. It feels just like the fight between Pre Vizsla and Maul. And we also have kind of like Rebels vibes because she does defeat him. And we have Mando basically saying that she is able to have the saber on a technicality. They acknowledge this and she is able to then be seen as the leader of the pack essentially again so she has the saber again it gave me vibes but like i said i do worry about what's going to be happening for these last two episodes how much they're going to have cram in there but that is it for me guys i hope you guys have enjoyed if you guys have make sure to like comment and subscribe share it with your friends and i'd love to know what you guys think any predictions for the final final two episodes let me know and as always stay safe and i'll catch you all later.